So many molecules in organic chemistry have trivial names. Uh, and these may be archaic, they may be derived from where the, uh, the compound was isolated, uh, they may be drug names, as in the case of ibuprofen, uh, or they may describe certain properties of the compound, for example, cadaverine is the smell of cadavers or dead bodies. Uh, this doesn't really help us when you come across a name that you haven't encountered before. Um, for example, can you draw the structure of pseudoephedrine? How would you know from the name pseudoephedrine that this was the chemical structure? Well, this is why we use what's called systematic nomenclature. So systematic nomenclature uniquely identifies chemical structures by their name alone, and it follows a, a sequence of rules. So first of all, we have to identify the parent hydrocarbon. We then identify the parent functional group, we identify any substituents, we identify any double or triple bonds, we number the chain, identify the substituent numbering, and then assemble and format. Now we'll go through steps 1 to 4 uh, progressively. The, uh, steps 5 to 7 we'll cover as we go along. So the first step is to identify what we call the parent hydrocarbon. Now, if we have only carbon and hydrogen in our molecule, this is quite simply the longest carbon chain we can find. So in this example here, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in the chain. Therefore, our parent hydrocarbon is pentane. If we move to a branched example here, we can number it the same way. One, two, three, four, five. But now we've got a substituent hanging off the side, which would give us a longer carbon chain. So actually, we need to number it five, six. Our longest carbon chain is six carbons long, therefore our parent hydrocarbon is hexane. In this example over here, we could number it one, two, three, four, but we can see that those carbon chains hanging off the side are even longer, so we could number it up to seven, but actually the longest uh, hydrocarbon chain in this case is eight carbons long, and it's that one there. So in this case, our parent hydrocarbon is octane. Now, one thing to be aware of is that your longest carbon chain might be hidden in an atom label, uh, and it could possibly even go around corners. So in this example here, you might think that this parent hydrocarbon is hexane, because 6 looks like the longest carbon chain that we have. In actual fact, if we draw out the ethyl groups, we can see that the longest hydrocarbon chain is 8 carbons long. Therefore, our parent hydrocarbon chain is octane. Next we need to identify the parent functional group. And the parent functional group is the highest priority functional group that you can find in the molecule from this list. So starting out with cations at the top, we go through carboxylic acids, ester derivatives, which includes acid halides and amides, nitriles, aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, peroxides, and then finally amines. Note that ethers, alkyl halides, and nitro groups don't have any place on this list. That's because they can't be a parent functional group. Now, having a functional group in your molecule changes how you define your parent hydrocarbon. So before, it was the longest carbon chain you could find in the molecule. Now, it's the longest carbon chain which includes your parent functional group. So the longest hydrocarbon chain in this molecule is... 10 carbons long, so you might think that your parent hydrocarbon is decane, but we have two functional groups in the molecule. We have an alcohol and we have a carboxylic acid. Now if we number um, including the alcohol, we find that we have uh, a carbon chain which is 9 carbons long. So you might say that our parent hydrocarbon is uh, nonane. But our carboxylic acid is a higher priority parent functional group, according to the list that we just saw, than an alcohol is. So actually, even though the chain is shorter, the longest chain is only 8 carbons long in this case, it's the only chain which includes our parent functional group, which is the carboxylic acid. Therefore, in this case, our parent hydrocarbon is octane. Now we have to number the chain. Now chain numbering starts from the chain end closest to your parent functional group, as we saw on the previous slide, and we insert that as a number between hyphens as a location on the chain. So we're just going to go through some nomenclature for some common parent functional groups, and I've just listed these down the side. So if we start with alcohol, the naming convention for alcohols is to end the, the name of the molecule with ol, and the two simplest alcohols we can get are methanol and ethanol, which are one carbon and two carbons respectively. As soon as we move to propanol, we now have two choices. We can have two isomers of propanol. So we can have propanol, where the alcohol group is connected at carbon number one, or we can have propan 2 or isopropanol, 
where the alcohol group is connected at carbon number two, and these are two distinct molecules. As we move further along, we can get different isomers of butanol, butan-1-ol, butan-2-ol. Note that you can't have butan-3-ol because your chain numbering needs to start at the end closest to your parent functional group. So if we moved the OH group to here, this would become carbon number one, that would become carbon number two, and it would still be butan-2-ol. If we move to pentanol, we now have three isomers, pentan-1-ol, pentan-2-ol, and pentan-3-ol. If we have two alcohol groups in the same molecule, these are called diols, and all we do is indicate where the alcohol groups are present on the chain by putting the numbers in between hyphens like this. So this is pentane because it's a five carbon uh, parent hydrocarbon, and the alcohol groups are at positions one and three, so it's pentane one three diol. Amines have the naming convention amine. So we have methanamine, ethanamine, propanonamine, butanonamine, and so on and so forth. And we can have the various isomers thereof. So propan2amine uh, just has the amine group at the 2 position, as opposed to propan1amine, where it's connected to the 1 position. Uh, and you can see various iterations of this. If you've got two amine functional groups in your molecule, they're called diamines, and it follows the same rules as, um, as with alcohols. So this is pentane-1,3-diamine. Aldehydes have the naming convention al, so the name of the molecule ends in al. Um, so here are our, our first sort of five hydrocarbon chains, methanal, ethanal, propanal, butanal, and pentanal. Dialdehydes are called dial. Um, notice in this case we don't need to deal with any uh, numbering because aldehydes will always be at the end of a chain um, by virtue of the fact that they'll always have a hydrogen directly attached to the uh, the carbonyl group. So therefore, we don't need to say it's propan-1-al. Uh, it can't be anything else. Ketones are named own at the end of the molecule. Um, so here we have propanone, butanone, and then we get into the ones that can form isomers. So pentan-2-one and pentan-3-one, right? Because these are separate isomers. Hexan-2-one, hexan-3-one. Notice that if we move to Position four, we'd have to renumber the chain, so you can't have hexan four own, um, but we can't we can have heptan four own because we've now got more carbons in the chain. Uh, diketones are named dione, and again, just put the numbers in the in between the hyphens. So this is two five uh, heptane two five dione. Carboxy carboxylic acids end in oic acid. Um, again, there's no need to uh, to number these because they will always terminate a chain. So we have methanoic, ethanoic, propanoic, and butanoic acid. If we have two groups, they're just called dioic acid. And again, no numbering required because we know that heptane dioic acid has to have the carboxylic acid groups at the beginning and the end of the chain by virtue of the fact that this OH is here, just terminating the chain. Esters are slightly more complicated, um, so in this case we have what I've called exile Y08 as the name naming convention. Um, if we consider them as being derived from an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, then the alcohol portion uh, becomes ile and the carboxylic acid portion becomes O8. So here's an example, methyl methanoate, because we have one carbon on the alcohol side, methyl, and we have one carbon on the carboxylic acid side, oh, methanoate. If we move to higher numbers of carbons on the carboxylic acid side, we can see that the methyl stays the same, so they're all methyl, but it moves from methyl methanoate to methyl ethanoate, methyl propanoate, methyl butanoate. And if we do the same on the other side, which is derived from the alcohol, so methyl methanoate becomes ethyl methanoate, and then propyl methanoate as this carbon chain gets longer. And we can see all the various iterations of this uh, from increasing the length of the carbon chain on either side of the ester functionality. Amides are uh, ended with amide as a suffix. So we have methanamide, ethanamide, propanamide, butanamide. Diamides are called diamide, so heptane diamide. Again, no need to, to mention the numbering because they will always terminate a chain. Acid halides, uh, or acyl, acyl halides, end in oil halide, uh, as they're, they're naming, and that's specific for which halide you're using. So in this case, we have ethanoyl fluoride, because we have two carbons in the chain, and fluorine is our, uh, our halogen of choice. 
Uh, if we move to higher carbon chains, it simply moves up propanoyl fluoride, butanoyl fluoride, pentanoyl fluoride. If we change the halogen that we're using, we just change it to chloride, bromide and iodide, and we then have all of the, uh, the various permutations within. Nitriles, simply end with nitrile. So we have ethane nitrile, propane nitrile, butane nitrile, and so on. Again, these will always terminate a chain. And dinitriles uh, are simply dinitrile. So hexane dinitrile, no need for numbering because we know it's going to be the beginning and the end of the chain where the nitrile groups are. Okay, so the third stage is to identify any substituents. Uh, and I've included in this identifying the substituent numbering. Um, it's you need to know that substituents are named in alphabetical order, uh, ignoring any prefixes like di and tri. Uh, they're not named in um, the number order, but we'll see some examples of this as we go along. So we'll start out with alkyl substituents. Uh, the convention for this is alkyl. Uh, just as a reminder, the number of carbon chains in your um, your substituent follows the, the naming uh, the naming standards of the uh, the alkanes, so methane, ethane, propane, butane, and so on, uh, correlate to molecules that look like this. And we can simply take those those names at aisle on the end, so methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and we know that these are one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and so on. Okay, so if we take our alkyl substituents, in this case, we have pentan-1-ol as our parent hydrocarbon and our parent functional group because we have a five-carbon chain here, which includes our parent functional group, which is the alcohol. But we have a substituent here at the three position, so this is three methyl pentan one -ol. If we move this methyl group across to the four position, it becomes four methyl pentan one -ol. And if we have two methyl groups at the two and four positions, it's two, four dimethyl pentan one -ol. And so on and so forth. So 345 trimethyl hexan 2 ol right? Notice now that the, the parent um, hydrocarbon has changed to hexane because we have a longer carbon chain in this case. Um, and here's a sort of slightly more complicated example. So this is 4 ethyl 2 2 dimethyl hexanoic acid. Um, and here are some more complicated examples. So this is an ester, uh, just showing how you actually incorporate that into the IL-08 uh, system that we saw before. Okay, so alcohols have a, uh, a substituent naming convention of hydroxy. Uh, here's some examples of, of using an alcohol as a, a substituent. So notice that in these cases, the alcohol isn't the parent functional group. So in this case over here, um, the aldehyde is the higher priority functional group. Therefore, the aldehyde is the parent functional group. So it's a propanal molecule with alcohol substituents, dihydroxypropanol. In this case, the acid chloride is the higher priority group. In this case, it's a ketone, and so on and so forth. So if we look at a molecule like this, we, this is how you incorporate um, diols in there, so pentane-1,3-diol. If we change one of those groups for an amine, does this become 3 hydroxypentane one amine Well, that certainly sort of makes sense looking at the structure. Uh, but actually, according to the IUPAC rules, um, our alcohol becomes the parent functional group because it's higher priority than the amine. So in this case, it's one amino pentan um, And that's just because the alcohol now becomes the parent functional group. So we use the parent functional group nomenclature of all at the end of the, the molecule. So ether uh, groups have an alkoxy naming convention. So very similar to how the alkyl groups uh, work, only just with alkoxy. So here's some example here. So one butoxypropanone, because we have a butoxy group here. Uh, two ethoxy, three hydroxypropanol, because we have an ethoxy group here, and so on and so forth. So here's an example of how to assemble a name with multiple substituents. Notice that this is five butoxy, three ethoxy, two methoxy, four propoxy hexane nitrile. Now, it would be tempting to say 2-methoxy, 3-ethoxy, 4-propoxy, 5-butoxy, but as I was saying before, it goes in alphabetical order, not in number order. So B comes before E, comes before M, comes before P. Amine substituents are named amino. 
so here are some examples here. So 3-aminobutanone, 2,3-diaminopropanol, so on and so forth. Um, and here's just a more complicated example at the bottom. So we have uh, an amino group both on the, the alcohol side and on the carboxylic acid side of an ester. Uh, again, these are quite complicated examples, but it just shows you how to format and structure a name. Alkyl halides are named, I've called it halo, but it's fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. Um, and again, just indicating the position in the molecule, so 3-iodopropanamide. 3-bromo, 2-chlorobutanol, just showing that it's alphabetical order because B comes before C and not in number order. And again, a more complicated example down here. Nitriles uh, are named cyano when they are substituents. So ethyl 3-cyanobutanoate, 4-4-dicyanobutanoic acid and so on. Uh, and here's a more complicated example. So, as we saw before with the amine, just be careful with your functional group priorities, with your parent functional group priorities. So, it's tempting to call this 2-cyano-4-methoxybutan-2-ol, um, but actually your cyano group has now become the parent functional group because it's higher up that priority list than the alcohol. So, in this case, it's 2-hydroxy-4-methoxy-2-methyl-butane-nitrile. Nitro groups are simply named nitro and again just indicate their position in the molecule uh, just with numbers. So here's a final example of just how to format and assemble your names. Uh, notice that everything is still in alphabetical order, it's not in number order, um, including all of the groups that we've seen previously. So the fourth stage is to identify any double or triple carbon carbon bonds. Um, Alkenes in this case are named ene if at the, the end of the molecule or n if they're in the middle. Uh, alkynes are named ine or ine. Uh, so this is propene and this is propyne. Um, if we have to identify the position of the alkene or the alkyne uh, using numbers, it is the lowest number um, of the double or triple bond which assigns the chain position. So in this case, the carbon carbon double bond runs between carbons 1 and 2 but it's heptonene because starting from this end of the chain the alkene starts on carbon number 1 um, if we look at this molecule over here so but 2 ine one ol we're numbering from this end 1 2 3 4 the alkyne starts on carbon 2 and runs to carbon 3 so it's but 2 ine um, and over here, for example, we have the alkene starting on carbon 3, so it's but 3 eno 8 Alkenes which can form geometrical isomers also get an E or Z designation. So for example, over here we have e hept 2 ene or e hept 3 ene uh, If we are summarise that double bond, uh, we end up with z hept 3 ene which has the functional groups on the same side. Uh, and we can indicate the positions of alkenes and their uh, their geometry at the start. So 2e, 5e is telling us that there are alkenes at the 2 position and at the 5 position and that both of these are e. And finally here's just some more slightly complicated examples including all of that nomenclature.